carry that there chest! The captain will be killed by our own men! Well, Ned can't eat nothing, Mr. Harvey. <laughs> I burnt his eyes out myself before we climbed in the longboat. Devil's got the captain ashore. Hey. The captain had scuttled his own ship. Of course he's been devil's, you fool. Mark, when our mates come ashore, he's finished. And us with him. Not without the longboats. They be food for sharks, laddie. But we'll all be killed. We'll be battling something worse than death, Mr. Army. <laughs> Curse you, Captain. You've murdered me. May be cursed already, Mr. Harvey. Poor Tom. Poor Tom. Lads, you'll never know how lucky you were. You want I should fetch old Tom up here, Captain? Fall to guard the treasure, like. Ain't you gonna leave a dead man buried with the treasure? Two dead men, Stephen. Be special. Guard it well. Pirate said, and those were the last words he ever spoke. The ancient treasure and its terrible curse were buried forever. But he just sat there, frozen in a state of absolute terror for four long weeks, till he finally starved to death. His flesh turned to dust, his organs nothing more than food for gulls and crabs his bones becoming bleached and brittle beneath the scorching Caribbean sun. <laughs> An interesting report, Amanda. But I hate to break it to you. In this class, we study history, not creative writing. But, Mr. Lambert, this is a true story. It happened right here in New Orleans. Okay. Documentation, please. Books. I really don't have any books. It's kind of like an oral history. Oh, you mean some family legend passed down from generation to generation? Not exactly. You have to say, Amanda, you know, the accuracy of such sources is questionable. So I was personally to... told by someone who was there. <laughs> okay. You mean some 350-year-old pirate was here in town? Has Lloyd Scott been informed? He doesn't live anywhere anymore. You just, you just said that... I interviewed him. <laughs> With a Ouija board. With a what? Miss Harrigan couldn't play here? What? With a Ouija board. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey. Last man is entitled to her beliefs. That's not the issue here. 
Hey, Amanda, you had an assignment. It was a history assignment. I'm gonna have to give you an incomplete until you rewrite that assignment. And please remember, history is facts. History is bunk. I beg your pardon? He said it, Mr. Armour. I heard him. Very helpful, Mom. Hey, Thank you. He don't like you here. Why don't you go back to where you came from? That's quite enough, Mr. Cross. I was just quoting Henry Ford. Okay, can you elaborate, Mr. Karim? As if I didn't know. Historical truth, if you can call it that, always depends on the perspective of who's ever writing it. If the Indians had beaten the settlers, would we glorify that good old pioneer spirit in quite the same way? History is never written by the vanquished. To a large extent, history is the bragging of the victorious. And to that extent, history is bunk. <laughs> Well, it's an impressive argument, Mr. Karim. Um, I thought a bunk was what you sleep in. No, history class is what you sleep in. Yeah! So, history is bunk. <laughs> you use a lot of long words. I like short words. I bet. <laughs> Now, what was all that stuff you were saying about losers writing history? Who cares about history except for losers? I just meant that history is largely the self-justification of the... that it's written by strong guys. See, if the Indians have beaten the Cowboys... Who cares about Indians? Anyway, you're the other kind of Indian, aren't you? I'm a citizen of the United States of America. You don't talk like one. What do I talk like? Like some guy who thinks he's smarter than everyone, but isn't. But I think you think you are. What do you think? I don't think I'm so smart. I don't think so either. I think I could teach you something. I think I could teach you a lesson. What kind of lesson? Like how strong guys aren't losers. Gotta go. Oh! Ah! When you're almost 13, I mean, you don't actually believe you ouija some dead pirate, do you? It's called channeling. And yeah, I mean, I got a few words. A few? Okay, seven. Seven? And I just, I just, you know, I filled in the blanks. Anyway, I got a paper out of it. You got an incomplete out of it. You only got seven words? Oh, let's get this straight. You believe that I channeled seven words from a dead pirate. I mean, that you have no trouble with. What does the number matter? I just figure the fewer the words, less crazy you are, that's all. Crazy? Crazy? If it's crazy to think that there's more to life than, than video games and hundred dollar running shoes, well, then I guess I'm crazy. You know, but let me tell you something. There are a lot of very intelligent people that have had crazy ideas. It could be Atlanteans. My aunt's from Atlanta, and she's not crazy. Not Atlanta, genius. Atlantis, lost continent. They had a civilization there that was way ahead of us. Atlantis wasn't real. It was just a myth. Really? Do you know what this is? Part of an old chandelier, right? Wrong. My grandfather was given this in World War II. By an old woman, he meant Italy. She was descended from the original inhabitants of Atlantis. She told him they used to use these crystals for power. They could extract energy from these crystals. Enough energy to power their whole continent. I bet Gramps had to give her a whole pack of juicy fruit for it. You don't take anything seriously. Give it back. Mistake. Big mistake. No, it wasn't. I did it on purpose. I got me another bug to squash, but I'll be back. Yeah, right. Bleed it. Take a good. 
Good look, Malika. The next blood you're gonna see is gonna be yours. Lots of it. That was pretty smart. Glad you didn't stoop to his level or anything. That jerk just takes me off, that's all. Russell, what happened to my crystal? Well, it's gotta be around here somewhere. There it is. It's okay. Maybe we can... <sighs> now what? I guess it's gone. Gone? My grandfather's crystal? You know, this is all your fault! What do you expect me to do? Go down and get it. How? Well, all these drains, I mean, they have to be connected to a main sewer. There's lots of manholes out in the street. Sewer? Oh, please. Don't tell me a big macho hero like you is afraid of soiling his new designer sneakers. Lots of manholes out in the street, huh? Look, how was I supposed to know that the first one would be three blocks away? Anyway, it doesn't matter because we're almost there. Aren't there alligators and stuff down here? It's just the old wives, too. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I'm the one with the overactive imagination. <sighs> What's that? Just an alligator, Russell. Ha ha. Pardon my ignorance, but you mind telling me how this fits in with your plan? Very funny. My only plan is to pick up my crystal and to get out of here. Yeah, I like that plan. Sort of like in your store. Exactly. 
like in my story. This is weird. This is majorly weird. Then I really was channeling. Looks like you were tuned into the right channel. What am I saying? Am I nuts? There's no psychic connection here. Just two skeletons in a trunk. Who says they were pirates? Probably just a couple of dead beacons, guys. Russell, I'll bet you anything there's no <sighs> treasure. I understand. Synchronicity. Synchro what? Synchronicity. Psychic law of the universe. There are no coincidences. Because everything has to happen for a reason. Even if we don't understand it. Sure, I imagined all this. But I imagined this because it was here. I imagined this because I was meant to. Yeah, that's a convenient thing about the supernatural. It has an answer for everything. What's this? Bottle. Hold on a minute. Okay, there were real pirates, and they did bury real treasure, and I think that's what we found. But there were no genies. Genies are fiction. So what do you think's in it? I don't know. It's covered with skulls. And maybe it's Arabian rat poison. How would I know? By opening it. All right. Just undo the clamps. Come on, this thing's like a razor, forget it. Look, there's probably something inside of here, so let's find out what it is. Let's not. It's covered with skulls and razors. I take that as a hint. This is so amazing. Do you know what this means? Yeah, it means we're rich. Stinking rich. Is that all you can think about? Don't you realize that I'm tied into the cosmos? Besides, you're already rich. My dad is, but this is mine. Yours too, of course. Yeah, but are you sure we can keep all this? Aren't there laws? Yeah, the law of finders keepers. And this happens to fall under that law. I bore miners. Doesn't matter. Here's what we'll do. We'll leave the treasure here, and we'll take one coin as proof. And we'll show it to my dad's accountant, and he'll tell us what law lets us keep it. Okay, and if he can't find a law? He'll find a loophole. There's one thing my dad's taught me, is that every law has a loophole, if you're rich enough. And believe me, as of this moment, we're definitely rich enough. <laughs> supernatural it's, it's a toy some kind of toy 
It's a trick. It has to be.
What was that? I don't know. I didn't get a good look at it. Electricity, isn't there? Yes. No. Is at work here. Well, there's still one way out. The way we came in. Come on. Okay, hers and mine. Just as soon as we get out of here, we're gonna take to my desk. Oh. Russell? Russell, are you okay? What was that? There's gotta be some logical explanation. There has to be.
get clue from the clue bag, Russell. There's no logical explanation for this. It's magic, right? I mean, it's just some kind of genie or... or... Ifrit. If we... What? No! Ifrit! That's what it is! My nanny used to read me stories about them. Never thought I'd actually see one. Cool. They're demons! Enormously powerful! And absolutely indestructible. Cool. Wait a minute. Was there a top of the bottle? Like some kind of head? Yes. Why? Did you see where it went? Well, no, it kind of scared off after the cyclone came out. Tornado. Tornado. Whatever. It has to be down here somewhere. Unless it got away. Got away? Well, Russell, I thought it was a toy. Isn't that what you said? I'm sure we'll find it. We better. Oh, we've looked under every rock in this place twice. What do we do now? Keep looking. This is ridiculous. If we're trapped in here, it has to be trapped in here too. What was that? What was what? Shh. I think you're right, Freddy. You're hearing things. I wonder how it was made. The wizard or sorcerer or something must have sculpted it first and imbued it with some kind of psychokinetic power. For Pete's sake, psychokinetic? You wouldn't know psychokinetic power if it came up and bit you on No! Help! Guys, I think we found it! Get it! I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Unhand me, infidel! What did you say? Hear the words of the guardian of the Ifrit, blasphemers. Your desecration shall not go unpunished. Swell. Cork with an attitude. <laughs> pissed at us for taking that coin. That's it. It's because we took the coin. That's why it let the demon out. Of course. Why didn't I think of before? That's what the bridge do. They, they got our treasure. So all we have to do is give back the treasure. Right? The guardian of Ifrit does not give hints to infidels. No! Quick, Russell, give back the coin. Hmm? It's not here. It's gone.
great. It must have fallen out when we ran into Marvin. Marvin, he's got it. Are you sure? I saw him pick up something. I didn't see what it was. That must have been White zeroed in on. You know what? You're right. Come on, you guys. We've got to go back and find him. Yeah, if that thing hasn't already. Assuming that there is a Marvin to find, I told you, it doesn't want us. It may not want us, but I think it's got us. Look, I've had enough of you. No, you have not. There. Do you think you heard him? Didn't do him any good. all figured out. There's nothing to be afraid of. How do you figure that? Well, either Marvin's dead and the monster's a happy camper because it's got its precious coin back, or he's alive, in which case it'll still be chasing him instead of us. See? Just leave everything to me. What's to worry about? Try whichever it is. You're either going to run into a corpse or a monster. ever seen in your life? Very funny. And what's behind door number three? A brand new car! Vanessa, uh what is it?
which will be romantic, exciting. I never thought it could actually hurt anyone. This is all your fault, you tin bladed toadstool! Got its coin back. Marvin saved us. It's all over. Like hell it is! Don't listen to me. I tell you, the monster's <laughs> coming! That's what I'm saying. But then again, we Molokas have always been hard to scare. Marvin? What's happening? We thought you were dead. Yeah, below the neck, too. That's it. That's why the demon's so pissed off. Marvin's alive. Quick, let's kill him. Well, then why is the demon chasing us? It's not. We just happen to be heading in the same direction. It's really on its way here because that's where Marvin is. Guys, what are we doing where Marvin is? Good point. See you around, fella. Wait, you don't understand. It's so simple. Marvin just has to give it back its treasure. Treasure? What treasure? The coin you found on the floor. We didn't find no coin. Marvin, we know that you found a coin on the floor. It fell out of Russell's pocket. We didn't find no coin. You pick it up! Well, who are you gonna believe? Me or this little grease ball? This little grease ball. Sorry. No, it's okay. I didn't find no coin! And the next person who says I did, punch their lights out. Just a guess, but he may punch. 
actually told it how no one picks you for softball. I was never good at catching. Ask them. I thought I was dead meat for a second there. What else could I do? I mean, what can you say to a demon? I don't see what you guys are laughing at. He was after my butt. Crabby strikes again. Laugh, twitching one. Celebrate your so-called victory while you may. You guys, what does he mean, so-called victory? You think yourselves wise beyond all knowing with your strange speech and ridiculous clothing. But the truth is that you know nothing. We knew enough to send its scaly butt back where it came from. It is not quite so easy to atone for your crime. Isn't it? We gave the treasure back! And you think that is all there is to it? No, you pathetic infidels! For it is Allah's will that the defiler shall pay for their transgression! What is he talking about? Shortly it will return! Return to wreak upon you a fate far worse than your puny minds can possibly envisage! It's coming back. Look here, you little hoodoos. You're gonna toss that cotton thing off and you're gonna tell us now, you understand me? That is something that you will never learn. So there is a way. You better tell us! You can do nothing to make me betray my master. Oh no. We'll see about that. We have you right where we want you, and you'd better answer all of our questions. Loathsome urchins, know ye not that I am indestructible? Then prepare to spend eternity looking like a metal angelfish. I spit upon your friends. I don't think this is gonna work. How do you know so much about this stuff? Because his parents told him stories. Stories? Bedtime stories? Didn't your parents ever tell you bedtime stories? Sure. What happened to the little boy that shoplifted at 7-Eleven? What happened to the little boy that used a magnifying glass to burn bugs? Oh, uh, yeah. We get the picture. You have to tell me that one a lot.
one sent you. Good idea, Marvin. Hey, it works on people. Now tell us, what can you do to stop this thing? I have no influence over it. It is impelled by the forces of karma. You little liar! You said you'd tell us how to beat it! I said nothing of the kind. I promise to answer your questions. That is all. All we have to do is ask the right questions. Can this thing be defeated? Are you gonna tell us how? Perhaps. And then again, perhaps not. Wrong question. How can it be defeated? Very well. The Efreet is a force of indestructible power. So long as it retains its corporeal form, no man can vanquish it. But when it assumes its ethereal body, it is vulnerable. Ethereal? This guy knows bigger words than you do. You mean the whirlwind, right? Then, how do you kill a whirlwind? Think quickly! For heart, do you not hear? Not again. Yes, blasphemers! Prepare to know Allah's wrath! Airtight. 
Did you guys see the way that thing zapped her? I mean, it was like getting beamed up in Star Trek or something. She's dead, you moron! Can't you get that through your thick skull? Dead! Why, my wife, calm down! He didn't mean anything by it, I don't think. No use hanging around here and jumping down each other's throats. We're free now. Thanks, sir. So let's blow this stuff. I think we finally found a constructive use for your talents. is gonna do any good. That thing's got this place sealed tighter than a drum. Is it just me? Is it getting warmer in here? I was just thinking the same thing. It's gotta be 80 degrees in here. Right? I'd say we have 30 minutes before this thing is a heap of melted slag. So we didn't meet it. We're doomed. Amanda died for nothing. Stop blaming yourself, man. Who knew anything like this was gonna happen? I just wish I would have taken all that stuff she said about the supernatural more seriously. Left that damn coin alone. Hey, sorry I goofed on you all that time, man. Why, well, Marvin? Yeah, if I didn't, I wouldn't be about to have my butt kicked by something out of Alien. Well, I'm sorry too, Marvin. For a lot of things. 
I wish I'd been nicer to my folks. I always gave them a hard time for trying to make me appreciate my roots. You know what my real name is? Faraj Ben Aziz Abdullah Kareem. I mean, what kind of name is that to Leon a kid? They didn't mean anything by it. It was supposed to be a tribute to my family ancestors. Just didn't realize what a bummer a name like that can be for a kid going to school with John and Robert. Not to mention Marvin. I should have heard him when I said I wanted to be called Freddy. God, were they pissed. You have the blood of kings in you. What kind of kid is called Freddy? Well, I wish I'd paid more attention to him now. If I hadn't been so quick to put down all that stuff they kept trying to teach me about our culture, maybe I'd learned something that could have saved him in his life. It doesn't matter. In a few minutes, we'll all be toast. Transported to serve the sentence Allah has deemed more appropriate than death for the spoilers of his sacred bounty. What sentence? What are you talking about? She awaits now the same fate that is shortly to befall you. To serve for all eternity as slaves of the Ifrit inside the bottle. <laughs> Are you sure she's there? Trust me. Why should we? Because I can help you restore her to this world and spare you a similar fate. Yeah, right. Just like you helped us before. You're not pulling the same crap on us twice. You know whose side you're on, okay? And it's not ours. I do not blame you for being distrustful. But hear me. After some reflection, I have concluded that perhaps you did not intend to defile the sacred treasure after all. In addition, I must admit to being impressed by the courage and ingenuity you have exhibited. Oh, isn't that nice? Gee, maybe if you tell Predator's ugly big brother up there, he'll agree to give us a few centuries off for good behavior. Hear me! He can be stopped! And your female friend return to this plane of existence, but only if you follow my instructions and do exactly as I say. I don't know. Maybe he's telling the truth. You're gonna believe that bottle top, man? Give us one good reason why we should trust you. The best reason there is, you have no choice. Remove the bottle to an area sufficiently large to accommodate the inscription of the sacred symbol on the floor. Take care to draw the holy rune of sanctuary exactly as I indicate, for the slightest deviation will prove fatal. <laughs> Transcribe it with instruments of the utmost quality and precision. Procure papers of the finest Persian tallow, and with these adorn the symbol's major vertices. Make haste, for the moment of reckoning approaches more quickly than you know. Now, the final act is the most crucial. One of you must stand in the center of the room, unprotected. And when the Ifrit makes its appearance, speak the words of precision. I'll do it. Let me finish. The words may only be spoken by one whose hands have not sullied the treasure. What do you mean? No way, man. I got us into this, and I'm going to take the risk. You heard what he said, Russ. I'm the only one who can say the words. It's all right. I don't mind being the one. Really. Repeat after me. Galume. Goz Begir. Galume? Galume! I warn you, fail to do exactly as I instruct, and words will not describe the agony you will be forced to endure. Galume! Galume! Goz Begir! Perfect. What do Marvin and I do meanwhile? Do as you like. If your young friend succeeds in his task, you need no longer fear the Ifrit's wrath. And if I fail? 
Then there will be no place where you can hide. Guys! Guys! I think you better come quick. Now! the blood of its master and violated the sacred rule of its race was banished to the ether from which it sprang. 
spilled the blood of his master. It was only when I heard you speak of your family that I realized that you are the direct descendant of the great and exalted Caliph Benaziz Abdullah, under whose command the wizard Majiri created us to safeguard the Caliph's most valuable possession. You mean I'm... The rightful heir to the treasure, correct? Wait a minute, let me get this straight. You mean you meant for that thing to attack Freddy? It was the only way. I couldn't tell you, of course, because he might not have agreed to go along with the plan. And what about all those symbols and candles and stuff? Meaningless diversion. Then what was I saying to her all that time? Well, of course, some things cannot be translated literally, but in your language, the nearest idiomatic equivalent would be... Bite me. Bite me? The whole time, that thing was standing there, and I was telling you at the top of my lungs to... to... Perhaps your strength would return, little master, if you sat down over there. Shall I summon the Ifrit to carry the treasure home for you? No, thank you. Wait a minute. If that thing was on our side... Marvin! Just a thought. No. I think my friends will help me get this home. If I split it with them. Four ways. What? Freddy? Four ways? You mean... That's right, Marvin. Four ways. <gasps> Buddy! Freddy, are you sure? Amanda, if it hadn't been for you, none of this would have happened. Kismet. Or if you prefer, synchronicity. But how are we gonna get out? The doors are locked. Ah, yes! The hole in! One of you, Ferris Ben Aziz Abdullah Kareem? Me. I'm from Buccaneer Moving and Storage. I'm supposed to pick up a trunk. Jeez, what's in this thing? Just treasure, gold, and jewels, the usual. And my work order says we're taking this to four addresses? Uh, don't worry, we'll figure it out. <clears throat> well, Marvin, hope this has taught you something. It sure has. You should be nice to everybody, because they might turn out to be a millionaire. Hey, Freddy, wait up! Amanda? Russell? Thank you. We owe you everything. Merely doing my job. Although I admit some satisfaction in the way things turned out for you. Is there anything at all we can do to repay you? Indeed, yes. May I have your crystal? Sure. Now, put it in the bottle. Go on. Place me on top. I don't understand. Crystals are a source of great energy. Really? Certainly. But the Atlanteans used them to power their whole civilization. I 
can now return to my world. It is time for you to do the same. Goodbye, my friends. You must go now, quickly. Quickly! I believe the supernatural world is an amazing place to visit, <laughs> but I wouldn't want to live there. <laughs>